Okay, here's an example of a pre-equilibrium pre approximation problem that's slightly more complicated, but gives you a sense of uh, you know, how rate laws can be more complicated than what we've talked about previously. Um, so suppose we have this reaction. If you take chlorine gas and you heat it up with chloroform, also in the gas phase, and that forms carbon tetrachloride and HCl. Okay. This looks like a relatively nasty reaction. So what if, or not what if, but you measure the rate and your observed rate law is some K observed, and then we have dependence on first order in chloroform, but what we have is half order in chlorine gas. So, okay, this is an acceptable rate law because, again, we have our rate law in terms of our reactants and not in terms of any um, intermediates, but this tells us that something more complicated is going on. Um, so uh, one possibility that you can then think about proposing when we start, start proposing mechanisms. So I'm going to propose what turns out to be the correct mechanism. And then so the first step could be, let's say that your chlorine is in equilibrium, K1, K minus 1, with two chlorine atoms. So let's say this is fast. And then our second step, so again, multi-step mechanism, our uh, chloroform reacts with chlorine, and then it's abstracting the hydrogen atom from chloroform. So this is the second step, 1K2, and then so this would form this carbon-centered radical plus HCl. And then our third step would then be this carbon-centered radical plus another chlorine atom goes to K3, goes to our product. So if this was fast, let's say this is slow. So this is our RDS. And then if this third step is fast, uh, what this means is that we can figure out what our uh, overall rate should be. So like I said before, if a rate determining step is slow, any step after that, um, kind of doesn't really matter because, so for our, all our elementary steps, we, we can express them in terms of rate because we can know our stoichiometry. So this rate is going to be K3 CCl3 fluoride or chlorine atom. So far, so good. This is really fast. So again, this doesn't matter. Um, and then here is our second step. So this would be the rate that we care about, because it's a rate-determining step. But again, the problem is we have this component. So this rate, or this rate is dependent on an intermediate. And we can't express uh, reactions in terms of intermediates, again. So we have to figure out the concentration of the chlorine atom. And so here is where our equilibrium comes into play. So we know from the pre-equilibrium approximation that if it's an equilibrium, this equals K1 over K minus 1 which equals our Q. So in this case, we had actually two chlorine atoms. So this is going to be equal to Cl squared over Cl2. OK. So what this means is that if we want to solve for the concentration of the chlorine atom, this means that this concentration, hopefully that will get cut off, equals uh, it's going to be K1 over K minus 1 times concentration of chlorine. Did I get cut off? No. OK, not quite. And then this would be the square root of that. OK. So now that we know the concentration of the chlorine atom, we'll sub that in. And then we'll get to our final rate law, which is that our rate equals, excuse me, <coughs> K2 times the concentration of chloroform times concentration of chlorine atom, Sub subbing that in, this will give us uh, K2 times the square root of K1 over K minus 1 concentration of Cl2. Oops, sorry. Messed that up. Concentration of Cl2. Um, and times a concentration of chloroform. 
And so this gives us actually our final observed rate law. So k obs is going to be k2 times the square root of k1 over k minus 1 times times CL2 to the 1 half. That's how we can end up with something like a fractional order in a reagent because you have some more complicated mechanism going on. Therefore, the power of the pre-equilibrium approximation. Boop, 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 boop. Yay.